I am Mr. Kanyele, Visual Class Master Class. Let us look at how they set this in the examinations. Remember, it's about the 10 theorems that I want us to look at for now. In the future, we'll be looking at the three theorems that has to do with grade 12. Now, remember even the theorems, stating the theorems is examinable. Like you see here in the example 2014, it was question 8. 8.1, complete the following statement. It means that we're giving you a theorem, you've got to complete it. The angle between the tangent and the chord at the point of, con of contact is equal to the angle between the tangent and the chord at the point of contact is equal to the angle subtended by that chord in the alternate segment. Once we ask you about a theorem, we're definitely going to apply it in the actual problem. So the first part that I wanted to emphasize is that all theorems are examinable. The angle between a tangent and a chord at the point of contact is equal to the angle subtended by that chord in the alternate segment. That is the tan chord theorem. And you can be able to see it in the diagram. This is the tangent and this is the chord. Right. In the diagram, A, B, C, D and E are points on the circumference. In the diagram, A, B, C and D are points on the circumference such that AE is parallel to BC. That becomes important. AE, AE is parallel to BC. I see parallel lines. I don't see a triangle. So it's not the theorem that, has to, that says a line drawn parallel to one side of a triangle. So it is grade 8, grade 9. Well, we need to see the alternate angles, the corresponding angles, the co-interior angles. So if these lines are parallel, and this line will act as a transversal line, you must be able to see the alternate angles. That becomes important in this particular case. Others, they talk of a Z that is being formed. So this one is equal to this one. Because these two lines are parallel, therefore E1 is the same as, as, as uh, B3. That's what I'm getting from the fact that the two lines are parallel. B, E, and C, D produced meet at F, right? B, E, meet at F, right? Uh, G, B, H is a tangent to the circle at B. This is a tangent. I think of theorems that deal with a tangent. Tan chord theorem, tan radius theorem, two tangents from the same point. I don't see two tangents from the same point here, so that theorem falls off. Tan radius. A radius is coming from the center. There is no line that is coming here to the tangent, so that one falls off. Tan chord theorem. This is chord, this is tangent, so this one will work out. So this is a chord, this is a tangent. I go with the chord to the circumference. So this angle is called to that one. We got that one from tan chord theorem. B1 is 68 and F is 20. Let's see what we have. Let's quickly work it out. Question number one, for two marks, find the value of E1. Where is E1? This is where E1. What will be the size of E1? Ah, I've got this one at 68. This is a tangent and this is a chord. If I go with the chord to the circumference, I will land at E1. So E1 is the same as 68. Reason, tan chord theorem. There's a mark for 68 and there's a mark for tan chord theorem. It's only two marks. So I know that this angle is also 68 degrees. Reason, tan chord theorem. What is the next question there? The next question want us to find B2. Want us to find B2. Uh, let's take it a bit up. Right. Is that okay with you? Let's find B2. B2 in this particular case, let's see it. Where is B2? Oh, this now has moved. It's no longer here. It should be there, 68. This is 68 degrees. Find B3. Do I see where B3 is? This is where B3. And you can see that these two are related because these two lines are parallel. What then is B3? B3 is also equals to 68 degrees. Why? 
it's because they've got alternate angles remember when you mention alternate angles don't forget to mention parallel lines you'll say it's b3 is 68 degrees alternate angles ae parallel to bc let me write that one b3 okay say e1 is equal to 68 degrees what was the reason tan theorem Now we are saying B3 is also equals to 68. What is the reason? Alternate angles. And what is what are parallel lines? AE parallel to BC. So I get my max. 8.2.3. Find D1. Okay, where is D1? This is where D1 is. I hope you are able to see what this is. This is a cyclic quad. I want you to see this cyclic quad. Ah. And in relation to this cyclic quad, what is D1? D1 is the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. I want you to, to look at this cyclic quad. This is the cyclic quad. Remember my theorem says the exterior angle of a, a cyclic quad is equal to the interior opposite angle. So D1 will also be equal to 68. Uh, exterior angle of a cyclic quad right so d1 is also equal to 68 what is the next question there find e2 where is e2 okay this is where e2 is if you go back to your grade 8 let's go back to our grade 8 remember we talked about the exterior angle earlier on uh, let, let me just create it e2 i can see e2 there there's something like this there's something like f there and there's something like this one which comes down here so this is e this is where e2 is and i've got 20 degrees left which is f what do i've got i've got d1 we've already find d1 to be 68 this is 68 degrees i'm looking for e2 remember this that the exterior angle this angle here is equal to this angle plus this one so these two will give me that one so in the very same way e2 will be equal to that one plus this one it's actually that theorem from grade 8 hence we started there when we're dealing with grade 8 grade 9 so my e2 e2 in this particular case e2 is equal to d1 which is d1 plus uh, f which is the same as 68 plus 20 which will eventually give me 88 so d1 i mean e2 is equal to 88 degrees this is 88 right e2 is equal to 88 degrees this one the exterior angle of this triangle this is the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles remember that our d1 was 68 degrees so d2 will be 88 the next question is looking for for c how do we go about find c remember our c in this particular case there is a cyclic quad here there is a cyclic quad and we know that this one plus this one must give us uh, 180 degrees uh, hence 88 plus c must give me that so this angle plus this angle is equal to 180 degrees all right we are looking for angle the value of this angle angle c we know that this is a, a cyclic quadrilateral so this angle plus this angle must give us 180 degrees so it makes this angle c to be 92 degrees so that's important that you must be able to solve this it's all about theorems nothing else i want us to look at the next problem you. Uh, let's look at how they set this part in November 2014, it was question 8. In the diagram, O is the center. Center, center, I think of center theorem. Passing through points A, B, C. And you are given uh, C, A, B is 48, C, O, B is X, and C, 2 is Y, as indicated in this diagram. Uh, that's what we are given. Let's look at the questions. There are only two questions that I want us to do and then take a break. 
Determine represents the side the size of angle X. Where is angle X? Angle X is at the circumference. I mean angle X is at the center, but I'm giving the angle at the circumference. And this one is two times bigger than that one. If that one is 48, I multiply that by 2 to find the value of angle X. In this particular case, angle X will be equal to 96 degrees. So if this is 96 degrees, but this one is the same as this one if I'm looking for the value of angle Y. So we know that angle X is equal to 96 degrees. Angle at the center of a circle is twice the angle of the circumference. If angle X is 96, what is angle Y? Remember that angle y, if this is angle Y, this is, this is the radius. This is the radius. That means this angle is the same as this angle. If this is Y, this will also be equals to y. And the next question is looking for angle y. How do I find angle y? We know that angle y plus this angle y plus 96 is equals to 180 degrees. Sum of interior angles of a triangle. How many y's do I have here? 2 angle y is equal to 180 minus 96. Let me click, quickly get that. What is 180 minus, one, minus 96? Uh, 180 minus 96, it gives me 84. This will give me 84. Therefore, y will be equal to 84 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So y will be equal to 42 degrees. That's how you can answer any questions once you've got your theorems right. Thank you.